Welcome to the Art of Comics YouTube channel. Super excited to have you guys here joining me today. I decided, you know what, let's go big or go home. So this first episode is going to be about Kickstarters. And particularly, I'm going to talk about some of my experiences kickstarting comic books. Uh, so I have some really exciting things coming up in the channel. Uh, I've been doing a lot of painting, getting ready for the gallery that I'm going to be doing uh, July 12th. So I got some of those videos coming up as well as some reviews of some of my favorite graphic novels. Um, definitely going to do a review of Mouse, From Hell, Jimmy Corrigan, all those big ones. But first I'm going to probably start with some reviews of some of the minor, uh, maybe the minor leagues or some other comics that are not so massive. So I'll be doing that uh, next week. So I'll do some reviews next week. Got some painting demos. But right now, for the first episode, I really wanted to say, let's talk about Kickstarter. So while the Art of Comics show is going to be mostly about the craft, the art, the storytelling, we're also going to talk about the business side of it. And so today, I want to share with you some of my experiences, right? I'm not an expert, but I have experiences. So I want to share that with you guys today. So I have some slides that I made. I've been doing some uh, presentations for a couple years now on Kickstarters and I'm going to share those slides with you in the comments below so you can download those slides. I'm also going to have them zip it in and out of this video so hopefully um, we can kind of learn a little together and I can show you about Kickstarters okay, and how crowdfunding works with kind of creative projects. Hope you guys really like it. Uh, you're in for a treat. Here we go. So a little bit about myself and Kickstarters. Um, a couple things. So I've ran eight Kickstarters, a number of them associated with Pride Missouri graphic novel, which is kind of this Western supernatural story that I've been working on. And I'm going to have another video just about that, just about Pride Missouri and my first Kickstarter book and all that. So we'll do that later. But uh, a lot of those Kickstarters did that. Um, I also did a couple of children's books. And I did a board game. So I've been in three different areas of that pie of Kickstarter. And you can do all of them if you're you know, into all the different stuff. But I kind of experienced in those three areas. And um, so that's kind of where, I, where my expertise lies. And so hopefully this video, which is really talking about comic books, helps you guys. Um, and 19,000 was the highest I ever got. So I'm not an, an expert. I'm not like the, the pebble watchmaker or somebody like that. I um, haven't made that many. Uh, but I did, I did those. Uh, I backed 45 projects. And I think that's an important part of this. I really love crowdfunding. I just love the whole concept of it. But I do think that it's important as a creator to support other creators. So I think the first thing you should do before you launch a Kickstarter is back some. Okay, I think that's really important. Just about bringing back the community, bringing back to the people, these other creators, I think it's critical to do. So I say, first thing you gotta do, back some projects, okay? Watch what they do, see where they're uh, making uh, great things, see what they're making some errors, or you know, learn from what has happened before. So the first thing um, what I like to do talk about is theory and strategy. We're going to talk a little bit about setting up the project, pre-campaign actions, running the campaign, and the fulfillment. Okay. So how many have done the Kickstarters? You know, this is like for a, a presentation I do, so we'll kind of skip some of this stuff. Um, there are a lot of different crowdfunding sites. There is everything from Petri Dish, which is kind of science-based, BuzzBank, Indiegogo, GoFundMe, Fundly. Find out where, where the platform is that your stuff lies. If you're in comics, I would say Indiegogo and Kickstarter. Okay, those are probably the major ones for comic books. So if you go there, if you're making axe handles, then maybe that's a different one, right? And find out where that is. Find out where things, where your audience lies, okay? Because your audience is your sales force. That's like a big part of this. 
in crowdfunding, the concept is that the people that support your project are your opinion leaders that will then be spreading the word in this kind of viral way so that other people hear about it. That's the whole gist of crowdfunding, is that you do the initial work and then your crowd helps you do the rest. So they're the sales force, your audience. So find those customers. Uh, to do that is you're building this community, right? So really, as a comic book creator, uh, I've never done a book before, I'm gonna do my first comic book. How do I do that? Well, I have to build a base of people, build a community, and that's what Kickstarter does. It allows you to build that community together. Um, and so you're, you're looking for these new customers, you're building a community. So why do you use, why use Kickstarter, right? So here's the reasons that I say. Uh, it's for a creative project. So these are for more creative projects. You get the most reach. There is no equity involved. No harm, no foul. If it does not succeed, then you walk away. Uh, there are some fees, right? It's about 8 to 10% with all the different fees kind of added up together. Um, I like the no harm, no foul. I like the fact that, hey, if my goal is 5,000 and I only get 4,000, then that's it. We walk away, no money exchanges hands, and then I either relaunch or I come up with another platform. Indiegogo is different, right? Indiegogo, it's you have a goal, but whatever you make, you get to keep and you make it happen. So if you're doing print on demand, maybe Indiegogo is fine because if you only need 82 copies, you just could just order from your printer 82 copies of the book, then those guys are satisfied and you've fulfilled it. If you say, you know what, I'm going to print in China and I need a limited run of 2,000 copies, and to do that I need 10 grand, then don't do Indiegogo if you don't think you're going to get at least 10 grand right because then if you don't get that money you're not going to be able to do the book and you're kind of host right so with kickstarter if you don't get your your limit then you just walk away and indiegogo you got to you got to make that happen so that's the only problem or the issue that i would say for me i don't mind having the no harm no foul if it doesn't work then we walk away. Some people say, you know what? I don't want to risk that, and I want anybody who comes at me. And I get that. So it's just kind of your philosophy. There's other reasons why Indiegogo might be better. Uh, some of the fees, I think, are lower than Kickstarter. And uh, potentially the users or the community of Indiegogo is slightly different than Kickstarter. Uh, that's something you're going to have to kind of look at. I've not used... I used Indiegogo post Kickstarter. So they do have a thing where I believe it's called Indiegogo On Demand or Indiegogo Demand, where after your Kickstarter project is over, you then can flip it over to Indiegogo. And it does not run a set time. I believe it just runs. Maybe there is a set period of time, but it just runs and you then can kind of extend your campaign and get more funds that way. So you do your 60 days or 30 days on Kickstarter, and then you switch it over to Indiegogo, and then you can continue there. So you can do that, and I did that once. I didn't really see the results um, from that being very great, so I didn't think the ROI is worth it. But it's another way to do it as well. So back a project, you know, I say back a project because it's just a great way to learn the process. It also shows credibility, right? And you're a member of the community. And it's fun, right? So um, this is kind of interesting. Success rates by numbers of projects backed by all project creators, right? So the more projects you back, your success rate is really increasing. Um, and other backers, other creators will back your project. You kind of like back each other and you, you kind of like have a little community of the creators themselves. Uh, I think it's fun. I'm a huge fan of comics, right? So I want to look at new stuff. I want to get copies of 
you know, indie books or things that aren't being put out there by um, the large companies. And to me, that's what the best, that's, that to me is what Kickstarter is all about, is letting guys like myself who are independent, who don't have a contract, go out there, make their passion, make the love that they want to do, and, and bring that out to, to people to see it. Um, not, I'll be very candid, this YouTube channel, The Art of Comics, is going to be raw, keeping it real, 100, all that. I'm not a fan of the big companies doing the Kickstarter. I don't care for it. Now, if you start out small, indie, scrappy, and you become big because your project is massive and it's successful and this becomes a thing, that's one That's one scenario. I'm fine with that. I'm a fine being a millionaire out of Kickstarter, right? It's not going to happen, but I'm fine with that concept. Not so big on the established corporate companies big or small that then decide to launch their products on Kickstarter either as a way to test the market or just to get pre-sales not a fan of that that's just me I think it's about creative individuals making stuff that can't be published otherwise uh, and then some corporations and people say oh well this is a way to make some sales and so uh, I'm talking to you most of you is what I'm talking to are those board game guys. There are a lot of board game companies now that'll just launch on Kickstarter. And then after they fulfill the Kickstarter, they'll just now go into retail stores like the month later. Um, so not a huge fan of that, but I'm not going to get bit out of shape too much before. Uh, Kickstarter stats. So here's just some like, this is about two years old. So these numbers have changed. You know, but there are, there's some decent money out there, okay? There's a lot of backers, there's a lot of repeat backers, there's a lot of pledges, okay? 33% of all backers come back, okay, and start another project. When I look at my backers, the couple hundred I've had, a lot of them were what's called super backers, with kind of a term that Kickstarter uses. They back projects all the time. You want those guys. You want those guys. You're going to want your friends. You're going to want your family. And you're going to want those super backers, right? And the opinion leaders. Those are the guys you're looking for. So um, you kind of got to get them jazzed about it. Uh, here's just some more look at some some monies. And I'm, again, I'm going to give you guys these slides so you can kind of look at them. And then I'm free for questions completely. So... Shoot me questions in the comments below. You know, let me know what you're thinking. Give me a scenario. I'll back your project. I ain't got a problem with that. I'll promote it. I'll tweet about it. Whatever. I'm here to help. I love comic books. That's the whole point of this channel. So I'm all about it. Send me your stuff. Um, here's success rate by game. Okay, so this is interesting. Here's success rate by category. So if you look at these different success rates, you'll see what is the most successful and what is not. Uh, I'm just curious about what we got and what's the most popular. So if I go to live projects, the highest numbers are film and video, technology, publishing, right? That's the highest numbers. Lowest number would be dance. But although Lois Dance only has 37 live projects, the success rate is the highest, right? What's comics at? Comics is on the low end, actually. Uh, they're on the medium for, the success rate is 50%, which actually is pretty decent. Uh, but right now, at, the, at this snapshot, it's 110 projects. Now, let me tell you, this, that's another thing to think about, is your timing. Look at the trends of when you know there's two questions one is when is the project going to have the least competition and also when do you need this money right so try to get those to sync up if possible of course <coughs> um here's another graph here based on the types of film the types of projects and where they're located so you know not a big surprise that Los Angeles and New York have a lot of film projects, right? Not a big surprise there. Uh, and you can kind of look at where comics are. They're kind of all over. But it looks like the trends of these 
are pretty much the same. Although San Francisco has a lot of design, right? That makes sense. So does uh, up north in Oregon and Washington. A lot of green, a lot of that design up in those areas. Uh, the film is more Southern California and more New York. You can kind of see, you know, the big metropolitan areas is where they're going to do a lot of pledges. A lot of people will use crowdfunding. Um, not so much in the rural areas. And then the distribution of the category you can see by kind of the area as well. Um, what is that in Tennessee, that kind of lilac color? Is that games or it's kind of hard to tell if that's music. Maybe that's music actually, which actually makes sense, right? You got Nashville right there and it's like three-fourths music. That's, that's kind of interesting. Yeah, so it really is where the creators live, right? They're making the projects in those cities. That's what they're into. And that, that's kind of like Austin. Look at Austin's really big, right? A lot of creative stuff's going on there. Big standouts. These are the ones that we, that we hear about on the news, right? These are the ones that uh, go crazy. You know, you got your Pebble Watch, which made Insanity. Exploding Kittens, which made eight, over $8 million, which is just crazy. Uh, but they got something that hit, you know? And then you got potato salad, right? Uh, which is, so, so it's like, you can have this beautifully designed project, this crafted idea that's done by a company like Pebble. They make a lot of money. You can have this very indie, oddball product game thing, and it can make a lot of money. Or you just have this kind of wacky idea of making potato salad and you hit it. So there is no formula. It is kind of like, you know, a crapshoot. It is kind of luck of the draw, but there is some magic to it. But And there's also some strategy. And so hopefully we talk a little bit about some of the ideas you can do to kind of help that. Getting that magical, huge, crazy, viral experience is really hard and there's no formula for it but with some tips we can at least uh, do some things to get us better than we were so the expectations you know projects that successfully fund tend to do so by relatively small margins so 25 percent are funded at three percent or less over their goal 50% only raise 10% over their goal. In other words, when you succeed, it's not by that much. Projects that raise double or more their goal is the exception. So don't start a campaign with a large funding goal, thinking you're going to raise a lot more than you asked for. Set a realistic goal. Projects that fail tend to fail by large margins. 10% were only able to reach 30% of their funding goal. 3% made it only 50%. In other words, when you fail, you fail big. So that's important when you're setting up your goal amount. How much do you really need? How much do you need? You got to ask yourself that. How much do you need? And make that realistic. Make that amount that you need to be the actual amount that you need to have. And figure that out. Do all the calculations with the shipping, with everything. And if you want to, you know, go a little higher than that. Okay, because once you make that, you might not make too much more than that. Okay, because what happens is a lot of backers will say, I just want them to succeed. Once they've made their goal, they're like, ah, okay, we're good. That's it. They don't need, they don't feel the urge to help the guy win if he's already won, right? People don't get as excited about, oh, he's going to double his amount more than they do he hasn't even made his amount, right? You will have the exceptions to that when there are some stretch goals and perhaps that once they double, then all the backers get X cool thing. And those are kind of some tactics and tools that we as creators can use to help you get a little more. But generally speaking, they just want you to help you make the goal. So don't go, you know, make it realistic, make it what you really want. Um, Kickstarter campaigns fail when the tribe of people who believe in the idea is too small. 
So you need your tribe to be a large tribe. And it needs to be an idea that is big, a big idea. Research, research. Another thing, so this one really doesn't really apply necessarily to comics. Uh, it's more for other types of projects, but the idea is, is there a product out there that solves the problem? Uh, how many similar projects have been put out there? What mistakes can you learn from them? You know, and you reach out to these creators. So if you're doing a horror western book like I did, go on Kickstarter and search through all the past and current horror western comics. What horror western comics have been made? How well do they do? The ones that did well, what did they do? Look at their goals, look at their rewards, look at the book, all that kind of stuff. Was it a floppy? Was it a graphic novel? Was it a hardcover? Was it an art book? Find out what that was that did well and what that was that didn't do well and kind of strategize with that, right? Uh, that's what this is about is before you launch a Kickstarter, you need to learn it. You need to learn the community. You need to learn what's been done before so that you can like make yours better, okay? And creators, another good thing about Kickstarter is they've made it really easy for creators to like contact people. You can go and reach out to them. You can email them. I've talked to tons of creators and I've never backed the project. I'm like, hey, I love what you're doing here. Can you tell me about this or give me some pointers and that kind of stuff. So that's really cool. Um, you know, another again, this we're under this this uh, heading of pre-campaign. So this is before the campaign launch. We're asking ourselves these questions. What's your project? Uh, is it a thing? Is it an object? Is it an event? What kind of what's the category? And then you ask yourself, is Kickstarter right? Or is there another crowdfunding source that would be better? for my project, right? Um, how much does it cost to make? This is important. What's the unit cost? What are the costs per 10, 100, whatever those you know units are? What's the shipping costs? Is this a time sensitive campaign? You know, and it's kind of calculating all that to get your goal. You're also planning the campaign, you're building prototypes, okay? Um, if it's a widget, you find out who makes this widget, this part the best, you, re you source it out, you find out where, maybe you go overseas to do certain things, maybe you find somebody locally to help you with it, you find all that out. You test the shipping, you know, shipping cost too. You gotta calculate Europe, Asia, Australia is massive, I'll tell you right now. Australia, <laughs> I ship my Australian books, it's like 60 bucks. It's insanity. So I made a mistake there. So there's, you know, Japan, all these different shipping zones. Figure all that out. Can you do it media mail? Can you do this, do that? You know, calculate all that stuff. And then, you know, if you plan out these by increments of 100 or 200 or 2,000, how does that impact this, right? If uh, there was a Kickstarter I backed, it was a board game, and their problem was it was too successful. What happened was so many people loved it. So many people wanted it. They printed so many and they didn't have funds to ship them all. And it, the project became, it just ballooned up and went, in, it went crazy because the volume was a lot more than we're ready for. You got to kind of have some plans for that, right? It's a good thing to have, but you got to plan for, okay, if this blows up to 2,000 instead of, a hundred, how do my numbers change? Okay, am I getting discounts on things? Are things increasing prices? You got to calculate all that before you even start this this guy. Again, I keep hammering this this home. Set a realistic goal. Okay, what is the amount you want for your project? Okay, is there a buffer? Put some buffer in there, and remember those eight percent fees. You're going to need to calculate that as well. So if you make you know. Uh, if you make ten thousand dollars, you got to take out that eight percent. Okay, so you got to get all that out there. So the eight hundred bucks is out the door. So remember that. Um, time frames. Now I've been late. Not all my projects were late, but I've been late. And 
it's kind of like the redheaded stepchild of the crowdfunding world. Most, you know, here, 70% are late. Try not to be late. Set that realistic time frame. Make sure that your timelines are correct so that you can make it within that month or the second, the month after. You know, once you go over six months or more or a year, it's just bad news. You just don't want to be that guy, you know? And I'm not, I'm not, um, innocent of that either i've i've had problems with that so that's that's a tricky one uh rewards and pledge levels this is where a lot of people kind of like go crazy and the first kickstarter i did i went crazy it was for a simple 32 page floppy comic book pariah missouri and i think i have like 11 levels because i was doing the digital book the book and a uh, magnet. The book magnet and a and a sticker. The book magnet sticker and a shot glass. The book magnet sticker, shot glass, and a print. Just the book and the print. Just the print and two books. Two books, the digital. I mean, it was like, it went forever. And I learned that it was just such a... It was cool because I just wanted to make all these little tchotchkes for people. But it became a nightmare to ship it to organize it to get all these people the right stuff don't do it okay so here's some ideas if you're doing a comic book make it simple digital version a soft cover maybe a fancy hardcover maybe some extra pages maybe uh you know sign it with a little sketch in it things like that don't go crazy just keep it mellow Four to nine levels, I say, is my kind of, like, goal. Music, same thing. If you're doing a digital music, you do a CD. You do CD with extra tracks. You do a booklet. You do a concert video, things like that. A game. You put yourself in the board game. The game itself. Maybe you have some extra cards you give those people. Or some fancy packaging, like a box or something like that. Um, so all these different, like, levels of things you can do. Um, and I think that's important. Signatures, sketches, those are upsales. Those are ways to do that. Uh, you can do international shipping as a different level if you want, just to organize it a little different. You can also do early birds, where the first 10 people or 20 people that back at this level get it at a discounted you know, $5 off. Sometimes that's a good incentivizer for people. I'm not against it. Don't go crazy on it, but I've done it, and it seems to, to work well. Message. Here's the marketing 101 part. And this is where my experience as a marketer comes in. So I've worked for some marketing companies here in Ventura and Santa Barbara. I've done some, some crowdfunding, of course, myself. So this is where the message is important, right? So what's the problem? You state this in your message and your solution, right? What's the pain point that people have? And you're going to relieve that. Now, for comics, it's different, right? The comics, there's no pain point. You know, there's no problem with your solution. It's entertainment and it's awesome and you want people to get it, right? So that's a little different. But I would say if you're building some sort of a tech device or something like that, you do want to have a problem and a solution. Uh, just today, I saw Jim Lee's, not Jim Lee's, but it's uh, he's kind of the spokesman or ambassador for Hex, this new backpack. And it's, uh, it's branded as like the artist backpack and it's two versions and it's got uh, a portfolio, 11 by 17 portfolio that you can slip in there and it's got Jim Lee's drawing on the thing of Batman and it's got a little uh, Batarang zipper and really cool. I'm like, oh, this is kind of neat. But I looked at it. It's, you know, it's 240 bucks. Uh, I could get two really nice backpacks probably for that. And it's got some cool goodies, little gizmos, but, you know, I don't know. That's, that's a tough one, right? So it's like, what is this, what's the problem? Well, the problem is, you know, when I'm, when I'm bringing my backpack, my art supplies with me to a convention or to the park to do some drawings, my paints and ink spill out everywhere, and I can't find my pencils and brushes and my 
my portfolio is all bent up and so my backpack sucks, I need an artist backpack, right? That's the problem. So the solution is Hex, their backpack, and they have all these little features that somehow alleviate that, right? That's their message is that this is cool, Jim Lee designed it, he supports it, and all this stuff. Um, so then that's the kind of the message for that. Uh, develop ads. So another thing for your message that you're giving, you're putting on social media, online, local newspapers, flyers, whatever, you're adding the graphics, you're adding the incentives, why people want to join this community to build this product, right? You're getting press releases, send them to online and uh, papers, videos, all that kind of stuff. And you, when you're creating your message, you're always thinking of your audience. Who is that audience? Who buys horror western comics? Or who buys indie comics about X topic, right? Who are the who is the who are those people? And tailor that message to them, right? Well if you like this and this, you're gonna love my that, right? Um are they are is this audience of yours, do they use Kickstarter? Do they even know how to use it? Or you're gonna have to teach people. So one of the things I did was I created a video on how to use Kickstarter. And I think I made a blog post as well and posted it because I knew a lot of my family and friends who would support me had no idea at the time what Kickstarter was. This was, you know, five, six years ago. They didn't know Kickstarter. I taught them how to more pre pre launch stuff. But the campaign the campaign before the campaign, so this is so true. Um, before you even launch, you're kind of launching a pre-campaign, okay? You're saying, hey guys, the, the party starts July 12th. Up until then, we're going to talk to you about how this is going to be so cool. You know that backpack, about Jim Lee's backpack hex I was telling you about? I heard about it two weeks ago. I got an email about it. So I was aware that it was launching today. So I was all up all up in it. That's what you have to do. You have to prepare your audience, prepare people to be ready for this project before it even happens. Because you want that first day to just skyrocket. You want as many people to go to that page and to hopefully pledge that first day so it's all about letting them know when is the the big day when is the exciting event um so that's important so you're using this time to really expand your community your current community okay you're you're putting stuff on facebook google plus what well google plus is gone so that's not there but twitter instagram whatever you use to me email is your gold so email is what you're doing to like really get in people's face with it. And if you've got people's emails, then you've got yourself a way to get to them directly. And you can use MailChimp or what have you to kind of manage that email campaign, which I would say you're gonna do before the campaign even starts, okay? You're gonna make a great product. To make a great product, you gotta market it with a great Kickstarter page. You wanna have professional images. You wanna just show those those rewards clearly and and make it clean and pretty looking. You want to showcase your team. You want videos. You want to show them that you are the guy or gal to make this comic the best you can. And it looks great, right? So you're showcasing the art. You're putting sample pages. I would put a PDF where they could just download a part of the PDF. And they can just read, you know, 10, 12 pages of the book. Just boom, there you go. Now, if your book is 24 pages, then you don't want to give them, you know, half of it. But you got to at least have a couple pages there to see the art style. How does it look finished? Not just pencils or inks, but the whole caboodle. How does this finished art page look? And put some dialogue in there. Let us see your storytelling. Let's see what this is about. So that's important. Um, video. You got to make a great video. Your video has to be clear. Introduce the problem. Showcases your product. How your product will solve it. You're going to explain this product. And you're going to close the sale. Okay. 
you, the end of that is the call to action of I need your help to make this happen. That's what your video is doing. Okay, it is a commercial. It is your sizzle reel. It is saying this is rad. You want this. Okay, this is your sales salesman. This is your big sales pitch part. This is critical. I can't tell you enough. If you ain't got a video, don't even talk to me. You can't do it. You gotta have a video. It could be animated. It could be whatever. But you got a video. Go look on my videos. Prime Missouri, go look them up on Kickstarter. They're not the best, but they're videos. I made videos. I got real people to make good videos, put some effects in there, things like that. It's got to be good. I mean, there it is. Clever, good lighting, good sound, critical. Uh, under three minutes. Don't make it long. You can go four. I wouldn't go five. That's me, though, right? You can have other videos. I'm talking about the main video. And then go to your heart's content. If you want another video just diving down to the depths of the details of this board game and do a how to play this game, that's going to take more than three minutes. You can, you can do a 20-minute video how to play this game you know, on another video down below. Do that. okay? But right now, you're selling, this, you're selling them on this project. You're showcasing you as a creator, your passion for it, that's what you're doing in this video. So that's important. Um, examples, and so I won't go into these examples here, but when you, uh, if you download these slides, you can check out some of these examples of some things. Launch time. So now you've done your pre-marketing, it's, it's time to do this. It's nut cutting time. And Mondays and Tuesdays are the best. Don't do a holiday. Mondays and Tuesdays are the best. Everyone comes back from work. They're going on Kickstarter in the morning, on their work emails, whatever. That's when people are on. That's when to do it. That's my. That's the research I've done. That first 24 hours is the most critical part. You're doing, this day, you're taking off work. You're doing whatever you can for those that 24 hours. You are a full media blitz. This is like you are going crazy. All the emails, all the social, the face-to-face -face stuff, the paid ads, everything. You're using all your contacts. You're emailing everybody. You are living and breathing this product for these days. It begins now. And you are going in full mode. And let me tell you, it is exhausting. It is tiring it's emotionally draining there are highs there are lows people will back your project and you'll love it people will back out and stop backing the project which will break your heart but it's a ride I'll say that and uh, I've done eight like I said I don't know if I'll do more because it was a lot and I might do more I'm not super motivated at this moment but um I might it's just a lot it takes a lot out of me <laughs> it takes a lot out of me okay use all your contacts there we go uh okay these are these my projects maybe these might be my projects you see some trends here big time right what do we see what's happening this first day that first day is a huge jump. Huge jump. That's what we want. First day. Now the goal was 2,000, that top one. Goal was 2,000. We got over half of that in the first day. Okay? We got the 2,000 after whatever that is, the first week. A little after the first week. Okay? So that's what you want. Get that big hump. The next one over, you get that big jump the first day. Okay? And the other one down below, I think that was a children's book. A good, 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 uh, a good jump there. And then at the end, notice you'll have the end, which will have a jump too. Although I went down on that first one. I don't know what happened there. Generally, you go up, you get a bit of an uptick. Um, you notice something too, is it pretty steady in the middle? You're going to go a little up, 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 up. You'll get a little, but there's not too many huge bumps. 
usually a bump happens because maybe a press release or something like that has to get released or a new set of people get um, notified that this is gone. So that's kind of exciting. Maybe you're, one of your backers is an opinion leader and he posts something and lets people know. So that's cool. But generally speaking, you're just going to have that kind of slow, steady uptake. And you got to deal with that. And the, the trick of this is extending the the high uptakes and eliminating as much as possible that medium section, right? What do we do? Manage the project. Here we go. Remember, crowdfunding works best when the backers do the heavy lifting. So what you're doing for those 30, 60, 45 days, whatever, you are putting out new content. You're putting out update videos, update images, updating people about the project, about how it's going. Hey, we got new pages in. Hey, I just talked to my printer. I got the prototype back. Oh, I just calculated this. Oh, we got someone to do the cover. All these things. That's what you're telling the community, right? And you're inspiring them to promote that and to share that and to use their social media and their emails to promote what you're saying. So in theory, the hard work, all the heavy lifting is the backers. What you're doing is preparing a story, preparing the product, and you're just letting them know the updates. How's it going? Here's the latest, right? The good and the bad, that's important. Keep it real with them. Tell them when things are going to be slowed down. Tell them when you're worried that something might not happen. The more transparent you are, the more faith they'll have in you, and the, the, the more honesty they feel, and they'll, they'll back you more and support you more. If you try to hide the crap that's happening, the bad stuff that's going down, that will not work. Okay, It's not going to work, and um, they'll know it. So... Really, it's about motivating your backers to promote your story. That's what it's about. Okay, project management. Okay, this is where we're just doing project management for those times. You're doing updates. Here's my recommendations. Here's my just recommendations. Updates. You're updating twice a week. You're keeping the brand, the message going. You're being honest, realistic. You have backers connect. Contact them on social media. You're promoting, you're promoting, you're cross-promoting with other Kickstarter projects, other things going on. You're doing events. That's what you're doing. Okay? You're answering questions. You create activities, comments, likes on a project. You reach out to other Kickstarter projects. You're doing this all the time. Okay? And if you have a day job, you have other things going on, you carve out time to do this to update your people to answer questions because backers are going to ask you some stuff i had a backer ask me about the art in Pariah, missouri and if one of the characters was modeled after the actor who's in the good bad and the ugly he plays the bad and i don't remember the actor's name but that that guy he wanted to know if my book had that guy's likeness in it because he wanted to get it if it did. And if it did not have that guy's likeness, he did not want this book. And I don't, I don't even know what that's about. But I was like, no, I'm sorry. I love the good, bad, and the ugly. My book does not have that guy in it. Sorry. Um, so you're going to get some crazy answers, questions. So you got to handle that. Uh, promoting the project is a full-time job. It's time-sensitive. 30 days is your campaign, right? Or whatever you decide it to be. Every moment counts. Consistency is the key. Engaging is the key. Knowing your voice, knowing your audience, and promoting online, okay? So this is also means you're going to be going to these other communities here, right? So if I'm doing comic books, I'm going to Reddit comics. I'm going to message boards. I'm going to pages and meetups. I'm going to the local comic shops. I'm going to all those places that people who love comics go. I'm going there to find those people, and I'm telling them about it, right? I'm reaching out to all the press blogs about comics. Geeks of Doom, Bleeding Cool, blah, 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 CBR, Newsarama, whatever. 
I re I'm reaching out to all those guys, all the guys with the big blogs, all the creators on Twitter, you know, Jimmy Palmiotti, whoever, talking to everybody and say, hey, will you please spread the word, right? You've got to do that. Uh, here's referrals. This is kind of like some, these are my experiences again. Um, some, as you can tell, some projects are different than others, right? And I don't remember which is which, but it looks like majority, I would say, refer, referrals are coming from Kickstarter directly. So in other words, what this means is Kickstarter is promoting your project within its system. And that is like, um, you know, noteworthy, our favorite, you know, staff pick, those kind of things, right? Or ending soon or just launched. That's those kind of categories that Kickstarter puts your project in that helps promote. And they're going to get a little bit of that green. External is all the hard work you did. Okay, so if I remember correctly, the one that's like 10% Kickstarter, 90% external, that's Space Bear, the children's book. And the reason why that is, is because children's books on Kickstarter is kind of lame. There are, they are there, but people who want to read their children books are not going to wait six months for your book to come out because their kid is now older. They're going to go down to Barnes & Noble or on Amazon and buy the kid's book. They're not going to wait for Kickstarter. It just ain't going to happen unless it's something different, right? So I learned that. I learned that. Before I didn't know, before I thought, well, maybe, you know, they like creative stuff. Well, not really. Kids grow up, and so these kids are growing up, and you're not going to get uh, your book in time. So therefore... All that 90% of Space Bear was me. It was me talking to people, emailing people, my people, right? That's what that means. The green is people that Kickstarter found, okay? For the other ones, like the, the ones that are mostly green, those are the big, kick, those are the big uh, prime Missouri ones where Kickstarter was like, yo, there's a lot of people on this. You like comics. We think this is one of the best comic book ones for this month. Come check it out. People do that. You want to get on the top page. You want to get that star of the month. Okay? Here's a here's a further breakdown of that. So this is what I was saying before. The number of pledges and the number the, the percentage. So look at graphic novels, right? People who searched for graphic novels, 42 of my pledges came from that. Okay? People who just searched the name, Prime Missouri, it was 26 of those people. So they are people who like they knew, they knew the book, so they just typed in, okay, I'm going to look at this book called Brian, and they found it, right? Um, user profiles. 18 people just found me, and they looked for my name. They knew me. They found me and saw what I was running, and they grabbed it. 11 people came because of the last hour. The, the last 48, 48 hours, last two days, they get a reminder that says, hey, your project that you were, like, watching is now about to end. Do you want to push the button on it? Things like that. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. Tabletop games. So that was the uh, the one to your right is the um, werewolf tokens. So in werewolf tokens, you see how a lot, almost half of the pledges came from just the Kickstarter page of like discover new games, right? There you go. And here's some more. We won't go into all these, but yeah, you can look at what Twitter, Reddit, so you could sell. You know, I only got one person off Twitter, but it was, you know, it was somebody. I got to go try it. You got to try it all, right? There you go. Okay, promoting through events. Um, depending on your project, you can run an event. Now, you have a party. You can do a signing. You could do a demo. You can do it at a store, a convention. All kinds of different kind of events and things like that. I think an opening party is fun and a closing party. I think sending emails out. You'll find that some of your backers are going to be local people. And I've met, I actually have some honest to goodness friends, people I call friends, who were backers of my comic book. 
they happen to be local, they came to my party, and they're buddies now. That's like truth. So that's really cool. So have those parties, have those events. It makes it a community and it makes it fun. And I think it's worth it, you know? Um, so I'm all about doing events. Also just because that's my personality. I like that stuff. So that's what I'm into. Totally recommend uh, doing demos and things like that. And you could do them at stores too. Maybe you can work out a deal with your lo local comic shop and say, hey, I want to do a pizza party. You know, celebrate this this mar a lot, um, milestone in the project or the campaign and blah, 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 blah. Fulfillment. Okay. This is kind of, this is where it starts to get our closing party. And now there's still work to be done. Now, you don't have to sell them on this, but you got to still give them updates. Let them know that things are still trucking. Get the shipping materials ready. Figure out your vendor, your discounts, how you're going to ship. Are you going to use backer kit or some of those services, or are you just going to do it yourself? It's always a question about time versus spend. Ask yourself, do you have the time and the wherewithal to ship 200 comics? If you say, yeah, I can do that, then do it. If you're like, I really don't want to have to deal with it, then figure out a way to use a service or some people who will do that for you. So you figure all that out. So one of the things you want to do is uh, do start doing your shipping, right? So you're contacting USPS, if you're in the States, things like that. Um, I got a thermal printer, um, which was a little bit of an expense, but totally worth it. I was recommended by a buddy to get one. Um, and I tell you, this little guy is like the best thing ever. So maybe a th thermal printer is what you want. If you're shipping them from home, calculating all that stuff. And just keep in contact with your tribe, right? These are your people. These are your backers. This is your community. And uh, it's so critical. It's so important to do. So big important, very important. Post-project. Now that you have a tribe, what do you do? How do you create loyalty, right? Because you don't just want to do one. You want to build this and keep building this, right? And in theory, each Kickstarter you do, you're going to be making more and more money, right? Depending on the project, if you're in that same category. So what do you do? Create a newsletter. You get that emails again. Remember those emails you got from Kickstarter? You use those emails. You create a newsletter. Get the permission. Make sure it's cool. You put it out quarterly, monthly, whatever. You do promotions. Sell your product online. Brick and mortar stores if you have to, of course. Go to the local shop, have them carry it. Put it in diamond if you have to, things like that. Go take it to publishers. Prime them for your next project, right? Your next product. And so I need to do that actually tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm gonna probably Send out an email because it's been a while. It's been a number of months. And get them to know, hey, this is what's happening with me. I got these conventions coming up. I got this gallery coming up. I got this new YouTube channel, The Art of Comics, stuff like that. So letting them know, hey, I'm not dead. I haven't dropped off the face of the world, the earth. I am in this to win this. Thank you for supporting me, those previous projects. I got other stuff happening too. Love to have you stick around. So that's important, is keeping the, the community going. The most important thing is have fun. Comics, to me, are a medium I adore. I'm doing this for fun. And doing a crowdfunding Kickstarter is amazing. I know I said it was hard and tiring and exhausting, and it is those things. But there is no better joy than making friends Building fans and people saying, hey, we like your work. To me, that's el maximo. And have fun with it. Have fun with the process. And I think if you enjoy it, you exude some passion. And people, people like that. People gravitate towards that and those personalities. So have a great time. That's the end of this, this little chat here I got going on. I hope it's helpful. Um... Really, this channel is all about like sharing the love, spreading it. And uh, I love comics. I love my experiences. I hope you take them 
and use them. Uh, put some comments. I want to hear your projects that you're going to do, that you've done, that you're doing now. Share them with me. Share them down below. I got, I'll got. i answer questions. I'll back your project. I'll tweet about it. And uh, I'm here for you guys. We're kind of building this community here on YouTube. And uh, I'm really excited. Next episode, we're going to do some fun stuff. I'm definitely going to do... I got my little lighting rig, camera rig. So I'm going to do a comic book. I've got it nailed down to two different ones. We're going to do a little review, deep dive. I'm going to deep dive into the art, the story. That's what I like. So I'm going to deep dive into a comic. Um, I also got to finish some of these paintings. That one's done. I just got to varnish it. But I've got a couple others that i got to finish up. So we might do some painting and drawing as well, uh, hopefully the next couple of days. I don't have a set schedule yet for when these are coming out. I want to do them once twice a week but uh thank you for sticking around with me please comment i'd love for you to like this video share it most important subscribe to this guy put the little bell icon lets you know when new videos are up um and hopefully we'll get this kind of in a rhythm i hope this was helpful for you guys i'm sharing my honest experiences and my thoughts and the things that i've learned through my my experiences and i hope that they're helpful for you on your creative project the art of comics man this is where we're at thank you so much appreciate you guys and have a great day Bye.